Okay, so first of all, I'm not going to be talking about conditional formatting because cells that have conditional formatting work differently. And also, if you're using conditional formatting, you can usually just put those conditions into a formula. For the first method, I am going to type equals subtotal. And then we need to select the number nine for sum, then put in a comma and then select the whole of the column. And I'll make this an absolute cell reference and then enter and then drag that formula down. Then I'll use the keyboard shortcut control shift L to add in the filter buttons. And then I will filter this column by color to get just the orange cells. And you can see all these numbers change. Then I will copy this value and then paste it as a value. And now when I clear the filter, this number stays the same. You can also right click on a cell and go to filter and filter by selected cells color. And then I'll do the same thing again. I'll copy this and paste it as values. Now, if I try and do this using the sum function, you'll see that this number doesn't change. And that is because sum calculates differently to subtotal. So you have to use subtotal or you have to use aggregate. And with this, we'll choose nine for sum. And then we need to choose five for ignore hidden rows. And then we need to select the column again and enter. And now if we filter for just the blue cells, the number changes. And I can copy this and paste it as a value. Then I'll use the keyboard shortcut Control Shift L to clear the filter. For the second method, we will use get.cell, which is an old function in Excel. And you can't just type this into a spreadsheet anymore, but you can still use it if you go to formulas and define name. And we need to give this a name, so I'll call it get color. Then in the refers to box, I'll type equals get dot cell. And this page here has more information about get dot cell, but basically it will get you information about a cell and you need to put two values into it. The first is a number which represents the type of information that you want. And the second is a cell reference for the cell that you want to get that information for. There are 66 different types of information that you can get, and there are two for the color. The first one is 38, and that will get you shade, foreground color as a number in the range one to 56 if color is automatic returns zero. And then the second number is 63, and this returns the fill background color of the cell. Now I have tried both of these, and they both gave me the same results, but I'm guessing that there will be cases where they give different results. So now I'll go back to my spreadsheet, and in here I will type 63. Then the second value needs to be the cell reference, and I'm gonna put the word cell in here. And in order to put a cell reference into a named range, I'm going to wrap this in a lambda formula. With a lambda formula, I need a parameter, and that is gonna be cell. And then I'll put in a comma, and the second part will all be the calculation and I need another close brackets at the end to close off the lambda formula, and okay. And now I have this new formula, so I can just type in get color, then select the cell I want and enter, and then double click to send this down. And each color gets a different number. So for example, all of the oranges here are 40. Then I can use a sum if function. 
So the range is this column here, and I'll make that absolute. Then for the criteria, I could just put the number 40 in here, but I can also use the get color function again and select this cell here and close brackets. And if I calculate just this part, you'll see that that gets me back to 40. And then for the sum range, that's this column here, and I'll make that absolute as well, and close brackets and enter. And then we can drag this down, and we get these same results as before. Now, there are a couple of limitations with this formula. When using the get.cell function, you have to save your spreadsheet as a macro-enabled workbook. So we'll go to File and Save As, and we'll change it here to an Excel macro-enabled workbook, and then save this. Also, if I change the color of one of these cells, you'll see that the formula does not update. You have to actually click inside the formula and press enter in order to get it to change. Now, there is a way around this. If I go back to formulas and name manager, I'll then edit this. And I will add in here the now function and OK and close. And the now function will just get you the current date and time. And of course, this changes all of the numbers here, but it does still work. And now if I change one of the colors, all I need to do is change a value in one of the cells in this spreadsheet, and the formulas will update because the now function is a volatile function. So it always changes whenever you do anything. And if you don't like having these numbers here, you can get rid of them. If I go back to formulas and name manager, I'll edit this again. And I will put this part in brackets. And I'll take the results of the now function and multiply them by zero and OK. And close. And now we get back to the original numbers. Then for the third method, we're going to use VBA. So go down to the sheet name at the bottom and right click and view code. Then go to insert and insert a module. And we are going to create a custom function. So I'm going to type function in here. Then we need to give this function a name. So this is going to be sum by color. And then in the brackets, we need to put the value that we want to put inside the function. So I'm just going to put cell in here. Then when I press enter, it automatically puts in the end function. And with a custom function, the result always needs to be the name of the function. So sum by color in my case. And we have to make this equal to something. And I'm going to make this equal to cell dot interior dot color. And then I'll save this and go back to my spreadsheet. And now we have a new function that we can use called sum by color. And if I select this cell here, it will give me a number to represent that color. The numbers that you get from VBA are different to the ones that you get from get.cell, but they are still unique to each color. So all of the oranges, for example, get this number here. Then you can use sum if, just like we did before. But if you're using VBA, you may as well do the whole calculation inside of VBA. In order to do that, we need to change some of this. So instead of having cell in here, I'm going to put in range. Then I'm going to say for each of the cells in this range, I want to do something. And then I need next cell here so that it will loop through each of the cells in the range that I have selected. And in the middle of this, I have to put what I want it to do. So I am going to copy this part here. Then I'm going to say if cell.interior.color is equal to 
Then I'll go back to my Excel spreadsheet and for the time being, I'm just gonna copy the number that represents the orange color. And I'll paste this in here. And I'm gonna say, if the cell is orange, then I want it to do something. And I need to put end if here in order to close off the if test. Then in the middle of this, I need to put what I want it to do. And what I wanna get is the cell value, but the cell value on its own is not enough because this will be recalculated every single time we go through this loop. So what I need to put is total is equal to total plus cell value. So the total starts off with zero, and the first time we go through this loop, it will just be the cell value. But every time after that, it will take the previous number and add the next cell value onto this. So each time we go through the loop, the total will get bigger until we get to the end when we will have added all the numbers together. And then here, we now need to change this to total. Then we can save this and go back to the spreadsheet. And now I can delete this here and I can do equals sum by color and then select this whole range here and enter. And I get the same number as before. Then we need to edit this code to make it work for the other colors, not just orange. For that, I need to put in another value here, which I will call my color. And then instead of this being a fixed value, my color is going to be a cell that I have selected that has the color that I want. So this needs to be my color dot interior dot color. Then we'll save this and go back to the spreadsheet. And now I can redo this formula and select this range here, and I'll make that an absolute cell reference, then select this cell here, which has the color that I want, and enter, and then I can drag this down, and we get the same results as we did for the other methods. Now the limitations with VBA are similar to get.cell. With VBA, you also need to save your spreadsheet as a macro-enabled workbook, and also, if I change the color of one of these numbers, if I change this back to green, the values don't update, even if I type something random into one of these cells. In order to fix this, I need to go back to the code and add another line in here, and that is gonna be application.volatile. And this turns this into a volatile function. So now I can save this and go back to my spreadsheet and I need to redo my formulas and we'll do sum by color and select this range and make it absolute and then select this cell and enter and drag this down. And now I'll change this cell back to orange and then I'll type something random into one of the cells and this time the VBA function updates. Okay, so in this video, I have shown you how to add values based on their cell color in Excel, and that is everything.